So the next main thing that we have to do is actually have an end state to the game uh, and then apply colors to differentiate between the characters. Uh, most of this is going to be done within the scene. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is, if you noticed here, uh, you would you know you'd just do it anyway. All of these are listed as numbers, uh, so you know where to create these from in for future reference. Um, but we're gonna, when created, when we're defining the health, we're also gonna define uh, the color of the characters. Um, now, thankfully, we've got a range to work with for that. We've got you know the 360 degrees of a color wheel. Um, so we're going to split that essentially down the middle with a kind of 10, uh, 10 to 20 um, degree difference. So I'm going to do, for player one, the range between 10 and 150. And then uh, for player two, I'm going to do the range between uh, 350. Sorry. Um, 170 and 350 and what that will give us is a guarantee that the two characters will never be the same color um, so you'll always have like two kind of oppose, uh, opponents that are easily easy to dis distinguish from one another uh, but this value in itself isn't enough uh, what we need to do is actually go through and use a piece of code to apply this to each of our actors. Um, so what we can do is if I go to my box at the top, uh, I can create myself a new event. And that's going to be a when created event. And what that's going to involve is going to actor effects and I'm going to apply uh, an adjustment of hue effect. Uh, now the value that this is going to be is um, player one color. Now what's great is once I've created this piece of code here, I can copy and paste this to each of the actors that are relevant. So uh, close the player two hitbox. I could open up uh, everything that's rele relevant to the player. So the health, the hitbox, uh, the final score that we'll, which we'll be applying and using for something in this next section. Um, and yeah, I can just copy and paste this chunk of code in, and this should change all the colors for each of these characters here. Well, each of these, uh, you know, each of these actors. So now if I test this, uh, when the game begins, all of these should change color. There we go. Cool. So now I just need to apply that to the my opponent. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do, uh, at least for now, uh, is I'm going to create an end state for the game. So if I go uh, to the level, I've obviously made it so when a character takes a certain number of hits, they die. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if... Uh, a certain actor type is created or it dies. Uh, so if if the box at the top, so the you know the upper torso of the character is killed, uh, we're going to essentially create an end state, um, and this is going to be essentially displaying that that boxer two is one. Uh, now we need the coordinates of this uh, to know where we need to place this on the screen. So what we can do is go to our level, 
uh, select the object that we're talking about, place it where we want. So I'm going to put it about here. Uh, let's get that nice and equal. Uh, and then I can find the value down here. So 80 by 16. Both of them are equal sizes, so it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Um, now, what I'm going to do next is obviously this is, will still remain at this, this uh, on the same uh, screen. It'll just display that font. So what we want is a slight delay to for you know either player to revel in their victory, and then a reload, which you know after half a second, it's going to reload it into the, the level again. Uh, and all of these numbers that we've set at the beginning should then change. So if I test that, or save it, um, we can now test this. Okay, so if I quickly run over with my other player, beat up my uh, opponent, you'll notice that it doesn't actually end. Uh, the reason for that is because we used this piece of code here, but at no point did we specify that when the character left the screen that they were to die. Uh, if we'd done uh, when our actor left the screen, then that piece of code may have worked. And the reason I say may have worked is because um, when the character leaves the screen, it becomes inactive. So there's a chance that before the code can run to say that it's left the screen, um, it could become inactive and therefore not run. Uh, so the two pieces of code that might be worth triggering or, or setting up uh, to make sure that wouldn't happen would be making sure that the actor was always active and also to kill itself after it leaves the screen. And that way, when we run this code again, it should work. Okay. There you go. Sweet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video here, implement both for either side, uh, and use this time to kind of think of a uh, of any, if there's anything else that I need to explain as part of these tutorials. Um, but I think it's more or less covered everything. Um, but I'll let you know if there's anything else that comes up in the meantime. Um, and if there's any cool features that I can think to add which aren't actually in the game, um, yeah, I'll add those in as well. Um, okay.